Hey everyone, today we're going to cover how to automate a program's element that doesn't have a name. Now the other day we showed you this really cool function that we found that uh, uses the new automation uh, UI. UIA? Yeah. UIA, uh, uh, User Interface Automation Approach from Microsoft, which is actually like, you know, 10 years old or probably <laughs> older. Uh, but we were really stoked that it was available and you know, we started playing with it and we made one video. So this is the second video. We're diving a little deeper here. What we noticed when we were using this inspect tool, which if you check out that first video, um, you can see how you can get it. But the um, some items that we were clicking on and, and looking at didn't have a name. And we were like, well, right. crap, if we don't have a name, how are we oh, getting rid of this? Yeah. Right. So the, the thing is that uh, the functions that I was showing last time, um, they all start like find by name or and type and stuff like that. Um, but if you don't have a name, like, yeah, you have the other option, which was finding by path. But I'm going to show you something related to that. Um, yeah, and what I wanted to say was this is going to, of course, depend on the program you're connecting to that you're trying to right. automate. Some of them are going to be very standardized and it's going to have everything will have a name. And some of them, like the tool Might we're not. using, some will have names and some don't, right? It's right. just how complex <laughs> it is and what it's spelled. Also, if you're enjoying these kind of videos, please like the video um, and comment on it as well. It really helps us out. So here's the thing. Uh, we were taking a look at the inspector tool like this and the library, if you go ahead and download the library that we were mentioning, um, the person created a, a small um, script called UIA viewer as well. So this library is very old. Um, the only thing is that it is, it was not, he updated it to work with browsers and stuff, but he also has this little viewer here that allows you uh, to get information about an object. You can start capturing and it goes ahead and gives you information about it. But here at the bottom, it gives you like click here to enable path capturing. So I, I was going to do that. And um, it gives you kind of like paths down there. Um, but let's go ahead and do, do the following because, right. You will notice that in some situations, I think in here, uh, no, all of that is good. All of this is given paths. But as soon as you go to a tool like this one here, you might go to, let me double check, certain, oh, yeah. So what, what was what's happening was that it was not giving me paths. Oh, there we go. Right, so there are certain, so, some certain things that even though you can you can see them, it doesn't have a path. And it, it, at some point, it was giving it to for for things that I wanted to click. So I wanted to click certain things, and it was not giving me the path. And I was like, "Come on, how how can I do that one now?" So if you are unlucky and you don't have a path and you don't have a name, right. you might think that you ran out of luck. But no, there are some other ways that you can actually work around this. Now, I'm not going to be using this tool right now because um, uh, it doesn't give me the full information. It just gives me uh, some well, basic information, which is good right. for most of the situations, right? But sometimes there's a there's a specific one that I myself would uh, made it available right away, which is named the automation ID. That anything that is an ID, I would like to have it in my tool, right? <laughs> because it's something that allows you to identify something, right? So um, in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the inspector tool. And you will notice that when I uh, hover over some of them, now here, even though I do not have a name um, and I do not have uh, other, other information like text and other things, but I do have an automation ID. And as it is an ID, I could rest assured that if I target that, I'm gonna be targeting that button by itself. If you use the class for the class, for example, like the class name, which is Q push button, then you will know that there's a few of them that have the same class. So you cannot use that to ID them, right? Well, so that's where play button. now scroll all the way to the right because you can scroll in the bottom of the uh, inspector right to so this thing here yeah but but get back on the play button you clicked off the play button let's go here play button and let's go to the right yeah you cannot see it oh there you go there it is yeah so, so you can see that this one is the play bit. but right play. the last little bit is, is the play here and the other one here the last little bit is it 
should say something of uh, oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, something like that. So, and we will see it in a second. But here's the point: um, that we can use those kind of things to ID a control, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how you can find that control using the functions that you have defined for it. So let me stop this for a second. Basically, you will start as normal. You just go ahead and include the thing, UI automation or whatever you want. Um, and UI uh, a interface is what I need. Um, and let's catch the resolve window. Resolved is going to be um, UIA dot element from handle and win exist will give me the handle i think let's see and exist and that's going to be hk exe resolve the exe that's what i'm going to use for that and now that i got my element now i could just go ahead and perform actions on certain elements now uh, what we talked about is that you can use the find functions to find a specific element inside the main window. So I just grab the element for the main window. Now inside that main window, I want to find other elements. And uh, as you can see, most, more, some of them say like find all by expression. Now the point with this one, when you try to go ahead and see what it does, like find all by expression, it doesn't have documentation as to what the heck you can do in there. And uh, what I noticed is that the documentation about what an expression is was not readily available. So uh, in one of the other functions, I don't remember which one, then I found out how it worked. But here's the thing, find first by expression is what I want to do. I don't want to find them all, I just want to find the first one, and that way I know that I'm working on one particular element. So the expression that I'm going to be using here is whatever I use here as an identifier, I'm just going to use it with an equal sign. So I'm just going to go ahead and find the button that I'm interested in. Use the thingy here. There you go. I double click on this line, copy it. And now the whole thing, paste it here, and notice that it's a very long thing, but this part, which is the title or the property that I'm looking for, I just cut it and put it inside my string with an equal sign. So you could use this to target any property that you want, the name of the property, the equal sign, and what you're looking for. So if I use here, area role says main, yeah. then I could use area role equal main. In this case, I'm using the automation that ID is, because that's... That is so not intuitive, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so, uh, so basically, that is not intuitive at all. And you can bind them together. So you could actually use... And let me just shorten this out just so that um, uh, we have a little bit more room. So this is the um, ID name or something equals this text and this is the ID name. So I just have it here and I'm just gonna put it here. Okay, so now I just shorten everything up into you know the automation. Because ID. we saw earlier the the play, the stop. Or <laughs> yeah, so so as you can tell here, it says transport play. There's others, other buttons will have different names. Uh, but, and that's what I just kind of like uh, want to see right now. But the thing is that now you can say and, and it is case sensitive. If the and is lowercase, it will not work. So the and, and then you can use any other uh, thing. Like for example, as I mentioned, area role, and here we go, area role equals option. So let's go ahead and- Wow, this so that's equals. really gonna nail that. Right. So right. now you can, even, even if you don't have an automation ID, you can nail down your um, search by adding a few things and you can use the or as well. So, or, so it could be this and that, or, you know, the control uh, is control element equal to. And basically as you're seeing, I'm just copy pasting. So I just need to make sure that everything is there. Now, keep in mind 
that this is read from left to right, which say, means yeah. that yeah, this terrible. or here, yeah, yeah you, you have to be careful because this and here is going to be read first prior to the or. And if you have several ands, it would be like that. These two. Can you, did you, I don't know if you tested this. Can you use parens in here? Um, no, you cannot use parentheses right here. Right. So you cannot use parentheses at the moment. Uh, but this is something that you should know about the expressions. But in general, if you're using an ID like this, you yeah. will not need to mix it or, you know, those kind of things. But it is good to know that you can do that. The expression is a very simple and or expression with a property with an equal sign and the value that you're looking for. That's it. So now after you find it, now this thing is going to return an element. And usually what you do is that you either save it in a, in a variable like this, or if you're just going to click on it, uh, you don't have to save it. You can just go ahead and dot click. And there you go. You're good to go. So basically, uh, now that you have something that you can use to identify the element, even if it is not the name, then you can go ahead and uh, automate it. Now I'm going to grab the second one, which is, uh, let's go ahead and grab. So I just click the play button. Then I want to wait a little bit and then click on the stop button, right? So I'm just going to grab this. I think it's the same thing as above. The only thing that changes is the dot stop right here. Everything else is the same. So I'm just going to do this. Um, there you go. So I have the play, I have the stop, and I'm just going to put a slip in between, I don't know, 3,000. Now, few things. Elements are not present all the time. This is something that you have to take into consideration. Um, for example, in a menu, right now, if I query this window and check how, which elements are available, and this is done by using resolve.dumpall. So if you do this and you take a look at what is available, there's a bunch of elements that are not going to be shown in there because they're not being, they are not created. They are created, for example, when you click here, now a few elements get created. And if you query the window now, now you're going to see them. So you have to keep that in mind. And it just so happens that this particular uh, program, if it is minimized, it actually removes all the elements to save memory because it's a very memory intensive program. So if I try to run the script right now with it uh, minimized, it's not going to work out, I think. Um, let me see what happens. Let me double check what, what happens if I just run it like that. And you notice that it didn't do anything, basically. It, it actually gives me an error, right? So, but if I have it um, not minimized, it's just maximized. Even if it is on the background, even if it is on the background, if I run my script, it would go ahead and play the video. And then it will stop it after three seconds. So, so basically, it was not um, um, in view. It went ahead and clicked on it anyways. And it actually stopped it after three seconds. So I am able to actually click and, 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 and do stuff. Now, there is a function that we could use, which is the resolve um, and wait element. So let me double check. Mm. Exactly. Wait element exist. And again, we can use expressions or you can go by name or by type. So again, you can definitely put checks on your code to just wait until that element is there for it to be clicked. And the same I could do for this one here. Just make sure that it exists before I click. So, so for instance, back when you had that menu, like you said, they didn't exist. Exactly. So what's awesome. I could, yeah, I could just yeah, wait for it. And when right, they pops up, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, because we know most people would in auto hockey, we put in, oh, I'll just make it sleep for two seconds, right? Which is, <laughs> Which is terrible. Yeah. Just terrible. This <laughs> way, it's like, it's dynamically, I use this a lot in web scraping. I would say, wait right. for this element to exist. The second mm -hmm. it does, it's then the, go ahead and the second do it. it does. Exactly. Yeah, interaction, and it was crazy how much faster it was. I had no idea. I was arbitrarily slowing it down so much. That is right. So yep. this is a very good thing to know that you can actually wait for stuff to show up or appear. Right. Um, but in general, what I would say is, uh, once you get the hang of the things that you can do with this, it's really amazing. Uh, and, and again, the main point, now you can automate programs that usually you wouldn't be able oh, to because yeah. the AC, the ACC library could get some information on resolve but there were some other things that didn't work quite right um the sending the keystrokes and stuff right. like that like you know yeah. it is really complex yeah. so in the, the end this type these, of control is good these things can dynamically be moved around on the screen so depending on who's done what that they may not be in the same spot Right, and, and in this case, it doesn't matter if I just make this very tiny or very right. big, right? So I yeah. don't care how the how the the thing is right now. If I click on it, it should just go ahead and click. Right, or and if you're using your computer and doing other right. stuff, right? Because it's, it's that not is right interfered by keystrokes and anything now, else. Now, I would I would actually be careful with this one because I'm noticing that whenever I click. Like for example, I don't know how it is doing it. It's bringing yeah. the the window forward. Yeah. Okay. So so I cannot say that with this you can actually leave the uh, uh, program on the background. Yeah. I I don't know if it is just Resolve or if it is any of them. So this is something that I would have to play a little bit around it. Right. But I think as this particular function, the click is actually kind of like mimicking a real click. This is not like control click or something gotcha. that can be detected as something. So I think as it is a real click, I think uh, it has something to to bring it forward before clicking on the on the on the control. Very cool. So if you guys again, if you appreciated this, please like the video if it's helping you out. Uh, we really appreciate it, and let us know if you want us to make more of these. Uh, I, I I can see right now also with just making sure that the um, the element exists first before you take action. You know, writing uh, a little function to help you know, right. do that automatically on everything. Of like, why yeah. would I not just check if it exists? <laughs> for, yeah, for button in, and I'm just gonna do this. Just button play. So I'm just gonna grab button play here and button stop. And I would just go ahead and say, just put it here and asleep and await. I would just put a wait, resolve, wait, and exist, the same automation ID. And there you go, and this, this like current button, like, let me put it, make it current button because button means something in other hockey, so I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So 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 this time now for each button, I would just wait for it to exist, click on it, wait three seconds, wait for the other one to exist and click. So I could definitely make a queue of actions that all of them wait for the element to exist before going ahead and clicking. So yeah. I would say this is a <laughs> an interesting thing that I would be able to play with <laughs> later on. And if you're um, if you're new to working with objects, you, right now uh, the next two days at least until the 25th, our intro to or in, intermediate objects course is on sale, and that's it's you like this is a class and it is a little different. Yeah, than it is a class. <laughs> so, <laughs> and a very complex class at it. So if you are hoping to go ahead and understand it on one read, uh, I have news for you if you don't understand about inheritance. <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna at some point build some simple yeah. tools to help you know yeah work with yeah. it you know a little easier but it's still this is very awesome so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that cheers bye